Hi everyone and welcome to today's writing lesson. Now this week we're going to be looking at some narrative writing where we're going to be using some dialogue including speech and different punctuation to write our own action scene near the end of the week. So let's go and have a little look. Okay. Can you remember what happened at the breakers yard? So it was an earlier chapter in the book or the scrapyard, can you remember what actually happened to Alex there? Have a little think and then we'll go through the chapter. Okay, so we had Alex went to JB Stryker, auto breakers, to find out more about his uncle. Ian Ryder's car was at the breakers yard. Alex inspected the car and found bullet holes in it. The workers at the yard were arguing about getting rid of the car. Alex had to hide inside the car to avoid being found. The car then got put into the crusher with Alex inside it. Luckily, he was able to escape. Sorry, there's a little mistake there. The workers spotted Alex and alerted the driver from the funeral. Finally, Alex fought the driver and used his karate skills to defeat him before escaping. So I hope that's just given you a little refresh of... The chapter we're going to be using this chapter for lots of this week now i've got a bit of fun coming up okay so it's gonna be a little drama starter normally we might do a bit of spag but this is going to get your brain going get your body going ready for some of the writing later on so it said earlier the workers at the yard were arguing about getting rid of the car and they said you should have got rid of it two days ago do it now So your little drama task is to pause the video in a second and act out what might they have said to each other next. So you can have two characters, you can add in a third character if you want to, but they're mainly those two and they're arguing, they're going back and forth about what was going to happen with, with this car. Have a little go. And I might show you one of mine. You should have got rid of it two days ago. Do it now. Got rid of what? That car? Nothing wrong with it. Yes, you melon. If we don't get rid of that car soon, someone will be snooping around. And then the boss will be on our back. Oh, I like melon. What's for lunch? Oh, have I got to do everything around it myself? Fine. I hope you really enjoyed that little bit of drama. I would love to see some of the clips of it, so please send them in. And I hope you spotted... Um, my two friends that I roped in to have a little go at my version. So it's always nice to do a bit of fun activity at that start of lesson. Right, so this week we are going to be using dialogue to advance narrative action. The big picture is by the end of the week we're going to write our own version of the fight scene at the breakers yard. To do that we first need to make sure we know how to use inverted commas for speech. So we've had a go at speaking but how would we write it down? Some key vocabulary to help us is dialogue, inverted commas, and speech. So, inverted commas. The most important rule in punctuating direct speech is that all words spoken must be enclosed by inverted commas. So, whatever is said has to have inverted commas around it. In British English, a single inverted comma may be used. So, just one little inverted comma here, look. In, however, though, a double inverted comma, so two, like a, like a 66 and a 99 used to be called, can also be used. They are both correct. Whichever style you choose, just use it consistently. Some authors use one, some use the other. We're going to use just one. So punctuation inside the inverted commas. All commas, full stops, question marks, exclamation marks, must be enclosed, it must be inside the inverted commas. For example, that grass looks delicious, said the smallest billy goat gruff. Now, the comma is inside that inverted comma. So look at the next one. Hey goat, shouted the troll, you are not allowed across my bridge. So we've got an exclamation mark there, inside, and you've also got a full stop over here inside the inverted commas. 
Same with this one. The question mark is inside the inverted commas. How can we get to the other side? Ask the biggest goat gruff. Not, so this is not how you do it, you do not put the inverted commas and then the punctuation. Right, it has to go inside. It's what, it's how, it, that helps how you say that word, get off my bridge. You need the exclamation mark next to it. So that would be wrong. Commas. Now, commas are another important tool to help the reader separate this direct speech from the rest of the text. Where direct speech precedes a verb, so it comes before, and does not end in a question mark or exclamation mark, a comma must be used. And you'll, you'll kind of see now with the example, it makes sense. So for example, we need to get to the other side, there's my comma, finish my inverted, inverted commas, my speech marks, moan the goats. So it's come before this verb, but it's still inside the inverted commas. And it's the same with this sentence here. Notice there's the comma, finish my speech, so there's my second inverted comma, and there's my verb. So it's got to go inside, and it comes before a verb. Um, where the direct speech before a verb ends in a question mark or exclamation mark, however, this punctuation goes instead of the comma. So you just swap it. So for example, who goes there? You use a question mark. Shouted the troll. You don't have to put a question mark and a comma. You just need one of them. All right. You don't need both. Um, so it's just something to remember. There's pretty much always got to be, there's got to be punctuation in there. So it depends on what you're saying. Where the direct speech follows a verb, so it comes after the verb, a comma must be used after the verb to indicate that direct speech is about to begin. So we kind of flip it now. Uh, in this context, the direct speech must always begin with a capital letter. So, for example, the smallest Billy Goat Gruff said, there I've got my comma, and now I've got my speech, and inside it, look, I've got a capital I. I'll go first. Next one. The troll shouted, comma, then my speech, mark my inverted comma, sorry. Who goes there? And again, I've got the question mark with that one inside it. Finally, the biggest billy goat graph shouted, there's a comma, oh no, you won't. And if you look, got a capital letter, exclamation mark inside of there. If you're not sure about any of these, please pause the video as you go in, have a look at it yourself or rewatch it, yeah? Another little bit to remember is something called new speaker, new line. If the direct speech in a text involves more than one speaker, so there are two people talking, a new line must be used for each new speaker. This helps the reader to follow what has being said. So let's have a look at an example. We can't let him win. He's just a grumpy troll, said the smallest billy goat gruff. Now, it's not going to continue by here. The next line goes here because it's a different person talking. You're right, agreed the biggest billy goat gruff. The medium sized billy goat gruff said, so what shall we do? So if you notice, there's a different line for each one. Helps the reader go from one person to the next to the next. Right, so it's a bit of our turn. Have a look at the following example, so consider it. The funeral driver said, get the car to the crusher. And the worker said, no. Have a little think about what, how this could be improved. Talk to somebody else, talk to someone next to you, in the room, up to you. How could that be improved? Have a little go. Brilliant. So you might have noticed that there are two people talking. So you could have used the rule, new speaker, new line. The funeral driver said, get the car to the crusher. And there's a full stop here now. No, exclamation mark, said the worker. So we've got two lines for our two speakers. It's much easier to read. Okay, so this is going to be your tasks for today. So this is Chili One. Um, I'll read through it quickly, um, but then you can pause and have a go and you have a, or have a look at the next chilies. So it says, complete these sentences by correctly adding in the inverted commas.
commas. So there are four sentences below. You just need to put in the inverted commas. If you finish that, there's a challenge that says, can you write your own version of this argument? Could you rewrite it? Could you do a different one using that skill? So that's Chili 1. Have a go at that if you want to. Chili 2 says, put in the missing punctuation and inverted commas to modify these sentences. So it will slightly change the sentence by if you add in punctuation or inverted commas. So again, there are four sentences. It's kind of like a conversation, but you've got to put in inverted commas and punctuation. I'm not going to explain what punctuation you need to go and have a think what's going to go where. Again, your challenge is, can you write your own version of this argument? You could rewrite this you, after you can make it, you could carry it on. It's completely up to you for the challenge. Chili three says, Analyze this piece of dialogue about the breakers yard workers, then correct and edit it. So there's a whole big chunk of writing. It needs completely sorting out. So it needs correcting, it needs editing, it needs to be moved about whatever you think using your skills from this lesson, punctuation and inverted commas, new lines, anything like that. Your challenge as well is can you write your own version of this argument? So you could correct this steal some ideas and make your own one. Right, have a little go. Brilliant. So, well done for having a go at those. Uh, you are more than welcome to send them in just as they are and we can have a look. Or um, for self-assessment wise, I've got a few slides where you can check how you could have corrected the punctuation. So you can have a little look yourself and then you can still send it in anyway. Plus we'd love to see some of your challenges. So this is Chili 1. Chili 2. Chili 3. And that's it. Well done. So please send in any pictures of your work or videos from the start, the drama start. We'd love to see those. Um, or if you want to send in your bits of writing where you've challenged yourself to make something different, brilliant. Send it all in and there'll be lots and lots of dojos handed out. All right. Thank you for listening. Thank you for all your hard work and I will see you tomorrow.